I said, are you hungry for the Lord Jesus Christ, for more of Him this Sunday morning? Amen, amen. It is a joy to be back into the house of the Lord this morning and to be among God's people today. What a joy it is, amen. Praise the Lord. I have a word of God I want to share with your hearts and lives this morning. Amen, amen. How many is glad that the Lord spared you this week? I keep saying that over and over, but it is it's just on my heart this morning, amen, that the Lord spared our life, amen, and I appreciate Him for it. Have your Bibles, uh, let's go with us this morning to God's Word, uh, Psalm 62, I want to read one scripture from there this morning, Psalm 62, I have several things I want to share with you up here, so I got a song book up here, and my telephone's up here. I don't usually bring it to church, but I needed it for a reason this morning. Psalm 62. I want to read verse number 2. He only is my rock and my salvation. He said he is my defense. I shall not. Be greatly moved. Lord, thank you for the precious and holy reading of your word. Lord, the writer said, I shall not be greatly moved. He had made up his mind that he was going to stand. Regardless of what comes, regardless of what goes, he had determined within himself, this is what I'm going to do. I pray today, O oh Lord, that we as the children of the living God would make up our minds this Sunday morning that we are going to stand regardless of what comes, what goes, that we shall not be greatly moved, that we are anchored in the cross of Jesus Christ. I pray today, Lord, that you would anoint us, that you would use us today, Lord, for your use and for your glory, realizing today, Lord, that if it had not been, may Israel now say, if it had not been, for the Lord who was on our side tell me Lord where would I be today where would I be but I'm glad Lord that you're with us and because you're with us we're here today Lord and we give you the glory the honor and the praise now Lord bless and intervene we ask it in Jesus name and use us Lord as a vessel unto honor now for this next little while and we'll give you the glory the honor and the praise for it in Jesus name we pray let the church say amen, amen. shake a few hands tell them it's good to see them in the house of the Lord Good to see you in the house of the Lord this morning. Amen and amen. Go with us also um, in your Bibles this morning, if you will, over to Luke's Gospel. Over to Luke's Gospel this morning. I've read these scriptures many times, but I'd like to just read them again this morning with the help of the Lord. How I many has got your hope built in Jesus this morning? Anything else won't do, will it? Jesus said, verse 46 of Luke 6, And why call ye me Lord, Lord, and do not the things which I say? Whosoever cometh to me and beareth my sayings and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built a house and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and it could not shake it for it was founded upon a rock. But he that heareth and doeth not is like, like a man that without a foundation built a house upon the earth against which the stream did beat vehemently and immediately it fell and, and the ruin of that house was great. I begin to think about these scriptures this week and think about the hurricane, the tornado that we had and, and everything that happened this week. And I thought, Lord, I, I pray that we're building on a solid, firm foundation. 
You know, I, I realized a lot of folks might have not had hope during this hurricane. But I'm glad I did. Hope to know that no matter what happens, Sister Kay, that I was still in good hands. Come on, somebody. I said that no matter what the turnout might have been, I still realized I had hope, Brother Mick, and that I was in good hands with the Lord Jesus Christ. I was in the best hands that was available. I had the greatest help anybody could ever have. And that was in Jesus Christ. A young man wrote a song many years ago. I say young man. Edward Moat wrote a song. And and I looked him up to just find out some more about this young man, Edward Moat here. Edward Moat was a, a pastor and a hymn writer. Born in London on the 21st day of January, 1797. His parents managed a pub, a a place they sell alcohol, and often left Edward to his own devices playing in the streets. Speaking of these childhood years, he once said, So arrogant was I that I did not know there was a God. He was finally exposed to the Christian gospel, and he was baptized at the age of 18. He was trained as a cabinet maker and worked in London for 37 years. Only in his 50s did he enter the ministry and was a pastor at Rehoboth Baptist Church in Horsham, West Sussex for 26 years. He was well liked by the congregation in Horsham. Listen. And they offered him a church building as a gift. Moat replied, I do not want the chapel, and I want you to hear this. I do not want the chapel. I only want the pulpit. And when I cease to preach Christ, then turn me out. He died on November 13th, 1874, and was buried in the church cemetery there at Rehoboth Baptist Church. But he made the statement, I just want the pulpit. And when I ceased to preach Christ, then turn me out. Hmm? He wrote a song that I have before me this morning. My hope is built. On Christ, the solid rock. I stand, all other ground is sinking sand, all other ground is sinking sand. Edward said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood and righteousness. I dare not trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. Listen to these verses. He said, when darkness veils his lovely face, I rest on his unchanging grace. And every high and stormy gale, my anchor holds within the veil. His oath, his covenant, his blood support me in the whelming flood. When all around me my soul gives way. He then is all my hope and stay. On Christ the solid rock I stand. Edward said all other ground is sinking sand. All other ground is sinking sand. I ask you the question, what are you building on this Sunday morning? Edward Moat realized in the 1700s that he needed a man in his life and that man was called Jesus Christ. Now here we are hundreds of thousands of years later. And the fact of the matter is that we still need Jesus Christ. Are you with me church? 
We're living in a day and an hour when a lot of people are professing Christ, but they do not know Christ. Brother Anth, I looked at my phone throughout the, the, after the storm was over and before the storm came and during the storm when we could get a little bit of service and whatever. And I see people calling on the name of Jesus. And that sounds good. But the fact of the matter is, they never called on him before the storm. Sister Anne is sad when we wait till the storm happens before we acknowledge that we need a man called Jesus. I know you may be thinking this morning, well, the thief waited till he was on the cross. Yes, he did. But you and I have ample time this Sunday morning to prepare our hearts and prepare our lives, amen, before the storm ever gets here. I thought about, listen, I thought about uh, as they were preparing, amen, and then people were buying gas, batteries, supplies. I myself was in that line. People waited for hours. I've never walked into Walmart and saw the shelves empty. The grocery store, the shelves were empty. And my mind went back to this God's Word. And I thought about what is it going to be like in the end of time. What we seen with Florence is a drop in the bucket. Compared to what it's going to be in the end of time. Amen. I heard just the other day people were fighting at Walmart. People are cussing one another out in the gas lines. I mean, it was hectic. It was just, uh, just crazy. I told my wife, I said, I'm not going to try to get out any. We'll save what gas is in the vehicles because I'm not fighting these people. But I thought about, are we ready for what's coming, folks? We had nearly, what, three weeks, four weeks? To prepare for Hurricane Florence, you've had hundreds of years to prepare for what's coming in just a little while. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I hadn't planned to say all that, but it's just in my heart this morning. And we've heard men of God and women of God preach this book for years and years and years. And yet some of us today are still not ready and not prepared for the coming of the Messiah. The Bible said today is a day of salvation and tomorrow is not promised us. What are we doing today? Are we building our house on the sand? Or are we building on a solid foundation? firm foundation that has withstood the test of time for nearly 2,000 years and if it will live another 1,000 years it will still stand the test of time but my question to you is where is your hope this morning is your hope built on Jesus Christ are you standing on the solid firm foundation I looked around and I said, boy, this church ought to be full and running over this morning. Huh? Well, all of those that were calling on the Lord during this hurricane, where are they at this morning? Huh? I told you on Wednesday night, listen, on Wednesday night, listen. I, I told you that Wednesday night, it reminded me of the children of Israel. It's in the book. Every time Israel got in trouble, they would call on the Lord. And he would bail them out. They'd get in trouble. He'd call on the Lord. He'd bail them out. Huh? And they kept going right back to the same old business. Huh? Folks, we preach this book till we're blue in the face. And people are still not ready. The Bible said, listen. Edward Moat said, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus' blood. And righteousness. I dare not listen, trust the sweetest frame, but wholly lean on Jesus' name. You see, I, I thought about this as I was sharing or studying God's word this week. Jesus said, Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my saying and doeth them, I will show you to whom he is like. 
He's like a man which built his house, amen, and dig deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood arose and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and it could not shake it. Why? Because it was founded on a solid, firm foundation. We're living in a society right now, folks, where folks are shaky. Come on, I might as well preach it like I feel it. Amen. I said we're living in a time I want to encourage you this morning. I do, brothers and sisters. But don't be, don't be taken in, amen, by the whims and the whims of this world. Don't be deceived in the latter day and thinking that everybody that says, Lord, Lord, shall enter in. Because everybody that cries, Lord, Lord, shall not enter in. The Bible said, but whosoever doeth these sins of mine, Jesus said, I'll show you what it's like. He's like a man that laid him a foundation that dig deep in the earth and said I'm going to build me something that I can build on to. Listen, no other foundation that is laid than that which has been laid and that is Jesus Christ. According to Paul in Corinthians, I'm telling you this Sunday morning, there is a foundation that's been laid and that foundation is still just as solid as it's always been. It's never left its grip. It's never lost this hold is still solid is still firm how many today is still building on that solid firm foundation it's the only thing I've ever found that will hold you huh? a lot of foundations gave way during this hurricane huh a lot of things lost its grip. But I'm telling you something that will still hold you. You know, I heard them say Wednesday night. The hurricane was bad, but the after effect, that tornado. I told them we fared pretty good during the hurricane. But it was all the rain that came with the tornado. That brought the destruction and the devastation. Huh? You see, I, I thought about something, Sister Leslie. Once the hurricane was over, we thought we had it made. We thought everything was over. Boy, we've just done, done so good. I, even, I was just thinking, Lord, I just thank you. Hey, man, the water stayed obeyed back there. Hey, man, and, and didn't flood out the parsonage. Amen. And all that kind of stuff didn't flood our church again. Amen. And come into, our, into the house of God. Amen. And then on that Sunday night. I was awakened about 1.30 in the morning with all the rain and the commotion and the lightning and the different things that was happening. And I looked outside and I thought, oh God, hallelujah. The whole parsonage was surrounded by water, amen. It was up to the back doors of the church here. And I thought, God, here we go again, amen. But I said, Lord, you know what? I just looked up into heaven, lifted up my hands, and I said, Lord, Elias prayed, amen. Hallelujah, that it would not rain. And it rained not upon the face of the earth for six months or three years and six months and the Bible said he prayed again and the heavens gave forth rain and the earth brought forth our fruit what are you saying I said Lord you can shut up heaven right now and about five o'clock that morning the rain stopped amen and we were fine it didn't come into the parsonage amen and I said Lord I thank you I don't know about you this morning but if it would have flooded the parsonage I would have still been alright either way sister Kay if he'd have took me out of this world I would have been better off you know why because I know that I know that I know that I'm building on a rock and that rock won't never roll that rock will hold me in the storm it'll hold me in the desert it'll hold me in the mountains it'll hold me in the valley it'll hold me when I'm going through my darkest night does anybody know what I'm preaching about I'm talking about a man named Jesus in which my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Jesus Christ and his righteousness. Huh? I didn't have to wait till the storm to call on him. I called on him and I knew him before the storm came. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling us this morning. There is a foundation that's been laid. Go with me to the book of Corinthians this morning. Huh, let me take you there just a moment. 
No other foundation can man lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Uh, 1 Corinthians 3 and 11. Now if any man build upon this foundation gold, silver, precious stone, wood, hay, and stubble. Notice what he said in verse 13 now, folks. Listen. Every man, every man's work shall be made manifest for the day shall declare it because it shall be revealed by fire and the fire shall try every man's work of what sort it is. Huh? You know, my mind went back to Noah and I said, Lord, I reminded him of his word. I said, you never destroy the earth again with a flood. Huh? But he knows how to bring us to the edge of it, don't he? Huh? Yeah. He's going to keep his word. Huh? I said he's going to keep his promises. But he knows how to get our attention, folks. Huh? I hate to say this this morning, but I say it with all the love that I can. I've never seen, I've never seen a time like it is right now in the society that you and I are living. I've never seen a time like it is in the church right now. Huh? You know, I, I told folks, I said, the Bible said it rains on the just as well as the unjust. I know we're in this world, but we're not of this world. Amen. But as long as we're in this world, we're not going to escape the problems of society. We're not going to escape the hurricanes and the tornadoes that come. We're not exempt from cancer and sickness. We're not exempt from all of them things. We're in this world. Amen. And we're made in this old fleshly body. And we got to go through some things, sister. And But I'm glad to know that when I go through some stuff... I'm glad to know that I know that I know that I know that thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling you this Sunday morning, we're going to have to go through some stuff. But I'm glad when I go through some stuff, that no brother Jody, that he is with me. Does anybody know the rock that I'm preaching to you about? Does anybody have that hope that I'm preaching to you about this Sunday morning? I said, I'm trying to be real nice this morning because I know we've been through a lot this morning, but I've got to tell you the truth about the, the fact is, folks, that people are living so loose this morning. Christians, Christians, Christians. Pastor Williams are living so loose anymore. Huh? It's like we're going to live here forever. And we just got all the time in the world. But I'm telling you something, folks. We don't have tomorrow. All you got is right now. All you got is right now. He said every man's work will be tried. Huh? Huh? In this, in this life, we're going to have some storms. In this life, we're going to have some tests. Huh? Not to cause us to fail, but to see whether we're going to stand or not, folks. Huh? Everything's not going to be always be howdy howdy. Everything's not going to be sunshine and roses all the time, brothers and sisters. Are you with me? Huh? Hallelujah. And people look at me and got the audacity and say, well, if God was really God, he could have stopped this hurricane. Oh, yes, he could have. Amen. Hallelujah. If he'd have really God, he could have spoke the word and Job would have never been tested like he was tested. But I'm telling you what, as he was with Job, as he was with Moses, he said unto Joshua, so shall I be with you, Joshua. Hallelujah. Be not afraid. Oh, hallelujah. Boy, I feel him right now. I'm glad that even in the midst of the storm, there is peace. Peace that surpasses all understanding. You see, sisters and brothers, the world don't know nothing about that peace. But I can lift my hands up at 1.30 in the morning and say, I know that my Redeemer liveth and is alive forevermore. And I know you got me in the palm of your hand. And if I'm in your hands, there ain't enough of devils in hell that take me out of your hand. I'm not going anywhere until you get ready for me to go, Lord. Is anybody ready this morning? Is anybody prepared? Is anybody building on the rock? Does anybody have hope? Hallelujah. Paul said, if I had hope only in this life, I would be of all men most miserable. 
I'm glad I got a hope. Sister Yvonne, that'll take me from this world into another world. Huh? I'm glad I got a hope that'll be with me. Huh? You see, because I'm going to tell you something. The other night, during that storm and during the hurricane and the, and the tornado, you didn't have your friends with you. Huh? You better have the Lord with you, folks. Huh? And I'm going to tell you something. That I, I, I don't, I just believe in my heart. Probably during this hurricane, a lot of people made promises. Lord, you spare me and I'll do this and I'll do that, Lord. Huh? Come on. Y'all with me? Don't forget about it when the storm's over with. Don't forget about it when the storm's over with. Don't forget about it when the sun comes out and begins to shine again. Don't be like the children of Israel. Every time everything starts going good again, we don't need Jesus. Hello? I'm going to tell you something. The God that we serve is tired of playing games. Huh? I said the God that we serve is tired of playing games. He's going to get our attention. Amen. I believe Brother Joy was telling me he was talking with a man. And he was one of them that was being real sarcastic about if there was really a Jesus. Why did Christians have to suffer during this hurricane? Remember I said we're in this world. And as long as we're in this world, we're going to suffer tribulation and persecution. We're not above or no better than anybody else. But the fact of the matter is this. That when we go through the storm together, that sinner man may not fare as good as I have because I've got my hope anchored in Jesus Christ and I'm building on a solid foundation that when the winds and the, and the streams and the rain begin to beat vehemently upon my house my house will stand because I'm standing on the rock if you're standing on the rock stand up stomp your feet a little bit and say I'm standing on the rock I'm building on a foundation that cannot be shaken that cannot be moved I shall not be greatly moved because I'm building up on the rock of Jesus Christ. Somebody praise him in the house. How many knows he'll make a way out of no way? Huh? One old songwriter said, I'll praise him through the storm. Huh? I'll praise him. Through the storm. Huh? You know, when we went to Brother Mickey's and, and Sister Christie's house the other morning, huh? Walked into that trailer, the floor was like a roller coaster in it. Huh? Looked to the wall that had come up about six inches on the wall of that trailer house, and that house is built way up off the ground. You see, from what their family told me, and it was an accident, Brother Mick, that while they were laying up in the house, they had no clue of what was happening as far as the water around them. But dogs began to pitch a fit. Now, you can call it coincidental if you want to. If my God can speak through a donkey, he can speak through anybody he wants to. Come on, somebody ought to help me, boy. I'm about to feel something here. Whoop, glory. Huh? I believe he spoke to them dogs, brother big, and they started raising all kind of sand and fuss, and you knew that was unusual. And when he looked out and he realized something, the water was flushing and running in, uh, rushing into their home, and they knew they had to get out. And through those dogs, God brought safety and protection to them. And when we prayed with them the next day, I said, you might have lost some stuff in the materialistic world, but I'm telling you what you ain't lost. You ain't lost your soul. Job never lost his integrity. He still trusted God and gave God everything. And today, brother and sisters here, because God spoke through some dogs and spared their lives. Say, preacher, I don't believe in that. Well, you can believe in what you want to. Huh? I said, if he can take a donkey and reprove a backslidden preacher. Huh? Don't tell me my God can't. Huh? Prophet of God can smite a rock and it bring forth water. 
Don't tell me my God can't. Pastor Williams, if you can take a dead man that's been dead for days and roll away a stone and say, come forth. And he got up out of a grave. Glory, glory, glory. Woo! Boy, I about feel the Holy Ghost now. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? I'm telling you that God we serve can do anything. Our problem is we just underestimate him. When I prayed that the other night, I said, God, if Elias can pray it, I can pray it. Because my Bible said he has no respect for persons. What he did for Elias, what he did for Job, what he did for Peter, Paul, James, and John, he'll do the same for you and I, brothers and sisters. Oh, come on, somebody. I thought I'd be preaching to a happy crowd this morning, to a lively crowd, to a crowd excited. Because I'm going to tell you something, folks. If it had not been for the Lord who was on our side, where would we be today, brothers and sisters? Where would we be today, family members, loved ones? Where would we be at today? Huh? See, a lot of folks didn't prepare for the storm because they didn't think it was going to be bad because we've had so many false calls. Huh? Like the old fellow that cried wolf. And he cried wolf and cried wolf and cried wolf, and people came and they run into him until eventually he cried it so much people quit coming. We've been blessed through the years so many times that now we took it for granted. I heard these preachers say it, and I'll say it my, I, well because I know it too. This is the Bible belt. We're supposed to be the Bible believing people. Uh, I said, we're supposed to have a faith people. Amen. Right here in the southeast. We're supposed to be a Bible-based people that believe in this book. But we're like the one that cried wolf. We've heard it so much. that This book no longer affects us nor phases us. Well, I don't think it's going to really get that bad. Sis, chickens has got better sense than humans. Uh huh. I said chickens. That mess in your yard make you mad. Got better sense than human folk. Huh? I asked Miss, my wife asked Miss Sue yesterday, said, How did your chickens fare? She said they went up in them trees and they roosted. Huh? They got out of harm's way. Huh? They got to drier ground. Come on, somebody. Huh? <laughs> Hallelujah. Because they knew something was about to happen. I talked to Sister uh, um, Ann's daughter, Lisa, the other day. Miss Lisa deals with donkeys. The kind got the cross on their back. And she said, you know what, preacher? She said, they won't go get in that house over there. She said, they'll band together in that field back to back. And they'll stay huddled up together. They won't go get in that building because they know that building could be destroyed. Boy, ain't that sensible? Come on, talk to me this morning. I got your attention now. I got you thinking about chickens and donkeys. Huh? Huh? Whatever it takes, because I got some chickens and donkeys in here. Hey, Amen. You all right with me, preacher? Uh -huh. Preacher, you all right back there? All uh right. -huh. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? She said they'll huddle together and they'll protect one another. What do we do when the storm comes up, folks? Somebody said, why didn't you open the church up, preacher? I said, well, actually, we had bags everywhere, every door covered in plastic, trying to protect the house of God, you know, from the, from the flood waters. And somebody said, why didn't you run to the house of God? I said, I didn't have to. He was with me. Right. Huh? 
God because this building ain't God, you see. Boy, this is deep stuff. Let me climb up here a little bit. Whoop, glory to God. Amen. Amen. What are you telling me? This building is not God, folks. God lives on the inside of this building. I said this earthly house of his tabernacle. Come on, somebody. This building is made out of brick and mortar and cement. But I'm talking about one that'll stand when the brick and the mortar and the cement is gone. I'm telling you about one that'll say, I'll be with you through the storms, through the rain. Through the flood, I shall be with you, saith the Lord of hosts. Somebody praise him. Just go ahead and get, just go ahead and praise him. Come on, you can do better than that. Just praise him. I was up at the hospital just the other evening, a couple days this week. Visited Sister Sherry's dad. He was in pretty bad shape. First day I visited him, I was able to talk with him. And as my wife and Sister Sherry was talking, I just bent over the bed and began to talk to Mr. Kenneth. I said, brother, how you doing? His mind was a little bit combated, you know. But when I got to talking about Jesus, it weren't combated. Huh? What do you mean, preacher? Because I told him, I said, Brother Kenneth, and tears filled my eyes, you know, because I can't help it. When I start talking about Jesus in my eternal home, I can't help it. And I began to talk to Brother Kenneth, and I said, Brother Kenneth, one of these days, I said, we're going to heaven. I said, we're going to be where Jesus is at. Huh? I said, that storm we just came through, he, he didn't even know nothing about the storm. Huh? Hallelujah. He said, was the weather rough outside? I said, yeah. I said, but you know, one day we're going to a place where there won't be no more rough weather. Where I won't never have to go out and try to buy gas and buy bread and buy milk when the shelves are empty. Amen. Hallelujah. I'm going to a place where the writer, songwriter said, we shall never grow old. Where there'll always be plenty of food and plenty of supplies. There'll never be nothing short there. Is anybody with me this morning? Good God Almighty, I feel like preaching. I'm telling you, there's a place that he said in John 14 and 1, I go and prepare for you a place that where I am, there you may be also. So, uh, and if I go and prepare you a place uh, I will doubtless come again uh, and receive you unto myself uh, that where I am uh, there ye may be also uh, Thomas saith unto him Lord uh, how shall we know the way uh, he saith unto Thomas uh, I am the way uh, and the truth uh, and the life uh, he that believeth in me though he were dead uh, yet shall come on Holy Ghost uh, yet shall he live again uh, is anybody alive uh, is anybody building uh, on a solid and firm foundation uh, that will stand. Preach, Holy Ghost, preach. What are you telling me, preach? I'm telling you this morning. There is a place eternal in the heavens not made with man's hands. What do you mean, preacher? He's coming back one day. Huh? He told him in Acts, didn't he? Chapter 1, as you've seen me go. Huh? Ascend, he used the word ascend. I will descend again in like manner. Huh? He's coming back, friend. You can take it lightly this morning. You can take it for what it's worth. And I'm speaking to the Chadburn Church of God of Prophecy right now because you're here with me. It's time we shape up. Huh? I said, it's time we shape up. You know what I realized during the storm? Some things ain't important. Huh? Every little I and T ain't got to be crossed all the time. Hello. Huh? I told him Wednesday night I learned something else. Hey Amen. I don't need a television. Because it takes up too much of your time. I, I saw that during the storm for me, for me and my wife. Huh? 
because at night time amen instead of watching a, a night show or whatever we're sitting in the living room amen uh, and she's got her Bible and I've got my Bible amen and I'm the narrator and I'm reading to her amen uh, and we're studying about King Jesus amen uh, we're studying about Job amen uh, we're studying about the great I am uh, we're studying about the one that said I'll never leave you and I'll never forsake you we're studying about the one uh, that said I'll take care of you amen and I'll be a father to you I'll be a mother to you I'll be a sister or a brother whatever you need me to be I'll be it amen I'm telling you brothers and sisters the Lord is coming amen I tried to tell Mr. Gale that yesterday that the Lord is coming Mr. Gale would you meet me in church in the morning and I'll tell you just what he said he said I won't make you a promise I said you need to make a promise and stick to it no matter about how bad you feel you need to be in the house of God folks And I always try to remember I was a sinner too. I was lost and undone. But at least when somebody come by and tried to talk to me about Jesus, I tried to listen. And knew what they were telling me was the truth. Huh? I looked at Mr. Kenneth in the, in the, in the uh, Columbus region the other day. I said, buddy. When I was telling about heaven and how sweet it's going to be, my, my next line was, you know what I was leading up to? I said, are you ready to go with me? He said, yes, sir. I'm ready to go. So I say to you, daughter, Sister Sherry, if he goes tomorrow, it is well. It is well. Say, preacher, we're humans and we hurt. I know, but I want you to understand something. Ten years ago, where would he have been if he took him? Where would he have been five years ago if he'd have took him? Come on, are you with me, church? Huh? He'd have been in hell. But now he's ready. Huh? I believe people are longing to go home, folks. I talked to Sister Jane yesterday, and she said, Preacher, I'm now 81 years of age. Amen. Waiting lopsided over in the, in, the, in, the, in the chair there. Amen. But never ceased to talk about Jesus and how good he was. But I said all that to say this. She said, Preacher, if I knowed what I know now, I wish the Lord would have took me home 20 years ago before my health got bad, before I had to ask other people to wait on me, and I can't get up and do for myself anymore. I just wish the Lord would have took me home 20 years ago. I'm telling you, the children of God are crying out. Even so, come up, come on our side. Come quickly, Lord Jesus. Come quickly. Is anybody ready in this church? I said, is anybody ready? Anybody been praying lately? Even so, come quickly, Lord Jesus. Yes, Lord, yes. Because I believe God's people are growing weary. We're growing tired physically in this old body. Huh? I read an article yesterday. Pastor, one of our overseers put it on Facebook. And I just happened to see it. And I was reading where another pastor took his life this past week. Depressed. Fought it for years. Huh? And the article dealt with pastors who have to put up with criticism. No matter how much good they try to do, one thing happens and they get criticized for it. And they get run down for it. And their family has to hear that criticism. And their children grow up with that kind of stuff. Huh? And still Sunday after Sunday, he tries to do his very best and do what he can. And it got to a point the pastor couldn't take it anymore. And he took his own life again. That's two in the last three weeks. And the article went on to say that most of those that are graduating from seminary school right now or have graduated within the last 10 years and they're quitting the ministry because they can't take it anymore. Huh? Ten years after graduating the seminary. And they're quitting. They're giving up. Throwing in the towel. I said, I can't do this anymore. 
what I'm telling you, friend. Huh? This is what we're doing today is not an easy task. It's a 24-hour task. Seven days a week. Huh? Through the storm, I'm steady praying for our people. Hoping everything's all right. I stayed on the phone more during this thing than I've ever stayed on a telephone calling our people, especially our seniors, and checking on them, make sure you're okay. Why? Because I'm not a hireling, I'm a shepherd. And I know that one day the Lord's coming back to get us, folks. And I want us to be all ready this morning. You see, because I'm going to say it one more time, my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus Christ and His righteousness. Huh? All other ground is sinking sand. A lot of folks just want to call on him when they're in trouble. Huh? But I'm telling you something, you can't you can't outrun him. I know some of y'all left town, I'm not picking on you. <laughs> but you can't outrun him. <laughs> uh, I know some of our folks did and they wanted to be with their families up the road. That's that's fine. I understand all that. Huh? I don't believe I'll never have no trouble with Sister Claire Bell leaving again. <laughs> she was crying on the phone the other day. I just want to go home, preacher. <laughs> and then she called me a day or so ago. And I'm, we're starting home today, preacher. She was so happy. And then she called me this morning and said, I got in at 3. I said, what happened? I thought you'd been home wait, yesterday early. She said, the wheels on the camper messed up and we had to go back. <laughs> Get them fixed and start all over again the next day. Huh? What are you telling me, preacher? And I just use that to use this here to say that no matter where we go, aren't you glad he's still with us? Aren't you glad he's still with us? Huh? You see, the foundation's already been laid. I know I've just skipped around a little bit this morning, but I just wanted to share what was on my heart with you today. To let you know that the foundation that's laid, he said it could be wood, hay, or stubble. Remember, those things will burn. Huh? Just the other day, I, I don't do a lot of burning, you know. My daughter's the burn queen here. She'll burn every day. She don't care. She just loves to burn. You know. Father-in-law and all them hauls all their limbs down there to my daughter because she's the burn queen. But I told her, she called me the other day. She said, Daddy, what you doing? I said, I'm out back over in that ditch over there. I said, I'm burning some. She said, you mean you know how to burn? <laughs> you think I am Pluto? <laughs> huh? I said, yeah, I know how to burn. I said, I burnt for many years. I said, I'd just rather not because it's hot. <laughs> huh? Brother Small throwing that stuff on there, you know, and it'll blaze up and it'll cause you to back up. Huh? Brother Jody just standing out there by myself, me and the Lord, and that old rake and pitchfork, and, and I thought, Lord, as I stood there and looked at that fire, I thought one day, Lord, that'll be no comparison to hell and eternal damnation where the fire is never quenched and the worm dieth not. I'm telling us, folks. We may lose everything materialistic we have on this earth. But I'm going to tell you, like Job said, whatever you lose, don't lose Jesus. He lost his health, his wealth. He lost his home. He lost his family. But last night, I finally got to chapter 42. And 42 is a restoration chapter and brother Ant, my Bible says he gave him double for his trouble uh, 
he gave him double for his trouble. Sister Deborah, he held on to God. Even when he didn't understand, even when God was distant. Anybody ever felt like God was distant? Job would speak to him and Job replied several times, God, why don't you speak back? And then in chapters uh, about 39 there, 40, when God began to speak, Job wanted to say a lot of things. While his buddy Eliphaz and, and all of his friends began to talk to him and Zophar and, and those guys began to talk with him and run him down and ridiculed him. And even one Elihu went as far as to tell him, listen here, you deserve more than what you got. Now them some good friends, ain't they? Huh? Those are the kind of want to stick a pitchfork in and put them in the fire. <laughs> Amen. But he had to listen to all of that stuff. And he would reply back to them. And it's back and forth, back and forth. And if you, get, if you study that real close, can I tell you something just quickly? It wasn't the suffering that got Job. It was because God wouldn't talk to him. Huh? It wasn't the suffering. Job didn't mind suffering. But it's because God wouldn't commune with him. God wouldn't talk to him. Huh? There are times in our life when God is silent. In times like Hurricane Florence, God may not speak to us. But even, isn't it wonderful? Even if he don't speak to us, I can still feel him. Uh, hallelujah. But in chapter 42, when all this took place and was finished. Huh? Let me go back to chapter 39, 40 in there. When Job wanted to say all these things to God. And then 39, 40. God just brought Job down to nothing. And he asked him questions about, can you make the stars, Job? Huh? The ox, the animals, and he went on all kind of questions. And Job just got littler and littler before God. <laughs> and then in chapter 41, when he had a chance to talk, he couldn't talk. <laughs> Preacher, God has a way of getting us, don't he? <laughs> Hallelujah. Oh, yeah. what do you mean, Preacher? And if I was God, I would do this, I would do that. Be careful. Huh? And Job couldn't even speak. And Job repented. And in chapter 42, God just blessed him abundantly. Not only did he bless Job, he reproved and rebuked Zophar and all of them guys. Bill Dad, them boys that spoke so harshly to him, Elihu, that spoke so harshly to Job. Huh? God rebuked him. Huh? Not only did he rebuke him, he said, you bring him a, a silver, of, a talent of gold. <laughs> Do it to it, God. Oh, hallelujah. What did he say? Make your enemies your footstool. Huh? And he calls his enemy just to bless him and bless him and bless him and bless him. Huh? That's the kind of God we serve. When the enemy says, I got him, God said, I'm fixing to bless him. <laughs> Hallelujah. Can I just speak a word this morning of faith? Sister Christy, Brother Mick, let me speak a word of faith to you. You lost what you had, but God's going to bless you better than what you had. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Anybody believe me this morning? Huh? That God's going to bless you better than what you had. I know, bless Sister Emily's heart. We had to throw her bed on the trash pile because the water rotted it. But I'm going to tell you what, she's going to get a better bed than what she had. She'll get a better living quarters than what she had because I know the God that I serve. He said, I'll open up heaven and pour you out blessings. <laughs> Stay faithful to him. Do like Job. Stay faithful. Anybody else in here, stay faithful. Sister Joni was telling us Wednesday night, some of you weren't here to hear the great testimony 
They just spent a fortune under their house. Huh? Sister's been sick for months and months and months on end. Didn't know what was going on. Make a long story short, come to find out her house underneath was eat up with mold. And sister's been sick from that for months and didn't know what was going on. Because they had a water leak and didn't know it. Probably five years, I think, Brother Mike said, probably been going on. Eat up with mold. Man said it's going to cost you thousands of dollars to get this stuff done. And I think she said the words Wednesday night, money that we didn't have. Because we don't have that kind of money. Huh? I still ask you, where's your hope at this morning? What you building on, folks? Huh? They just got in their house. Tuesday? Tuesday? Was a week ago? Wednesday? Got in their home. Got all that done. And she testified that God made a way. Amen to pay for that stuff. Huh? I said God made a way to pay for that stuff. Huh? Had to put in a dehumidifier, all that kind of business under her house and, and Brother Mike's. And, and guess what? Florence comes. Oh, God. I heard Sister Joni say the other night, she said, Lord, please. This can't happen again. We just got in our home. But she testified the other night after Hurricane Florence was over, after the tornado went through, all is still well. <laughs> Folks, that's the kind of God we serve. Huh? He'll take care of us. Even if we lose what we got, I still got to believe. As last Sunday morning's lesson would have told us in Sunday school. When he offered up Isaac. Huh? Drew back the sword to slay his only son. The heir of the promised child. It was Abraham's test preacher. But some writers said that Abraham had enough of faith to believe that if he slaughtered his son... That God would raise him up before he walked back down that mountain. <laughs> Come on, somebody. Ha! Has we got that kind of faith in here, folks? Are we building on that? Do we have that hope? Abraham believed God. And it was imputed unto him for righteousness. Huh? He's our father. Amen. Father of righteousness. In other words. Huh? What do you mean, preacher? I'm trying to tell you. Huh? We've got to stand on this book this morning, church. Huh? And I'm going to tell you something. Don't, don't forget where your blessings come from. Don't forget who brought you to where we're at today. Come on, Sister Kay. Huh? I know a lot of people are still struggling out there today. Huh? Rivers are still flooding. Huh? I went over to Whiteville the other day. You know, they won't let you down street, downtown yet. But I parked in behind Body Shapers. I was going to go there and help them work a little bit because all of Main Street, every building on that street is flooded and destroyed. The one across the street, part of Body Shapers, the, the ceilings fell in. Lady that cuts my hair sometimes there, Miss um, Teresa. I believe that's her name. Her and her baby standing out there in the street. She said, Preach, I fared better than anybody on this street. She said, You know, the Lord's still good. I'm walking down the street just looking in the buildings because they're open and everybody's stuff, man's, everybody's stuff is on the street corners because it's no more good. It's flooded. And I thought, Lord, as I just stood on that street corner just looking, everybody's working, throwing their stuff in the dumpsters. I thought, Lord, you're still good. With all the devastation, you're still good. I rode over to my buddy Greg's place there at Nautilus. Saw he was there, and I, 
I walked in. 52 inches of water in his building. Over four foot. But you know what? I helped him hook up some fans and did everything because the water was out at that time, you know, and he's trying to dry out his place. And he just laughed and joked with me, you know. He wasn't crying. He said, this is the sixth time we've been flooded. He said, with Matthew, I had 32 inches of water in here, and I thought, we'll probably never have that again. He said, now this time I had 52 inches of water. He said, but you know what? It's okay. Ain't no need to cry about it. He said, we'll dry it out. We'll put the equipment back and we'll work out again. He said, I'm not down. I'm not discouraged. And I thought, what a good attitude to have. Huh? And we just laughed and had a good time there together, just standing in his, in his building with everything wet, flooded. But we were able to talk about how good God is. Even in the aftermath. I'm going to tell us this before I close this morning. I'm not done, but I'll just close. Huh? When everything else around us is sinking sand, on Christ the solid rock, you can stand. Brother B, I'm so glad of that this morning. And I can stand. Huh? Folks, let's love one another, will you? Let's be there for one another. You know, I, I got the most joy. The other day we had that big old tree over there to fall. And sometimes a little devastation or destruction is good, actually. Because you know what? I got my brothers to come out here and work with me. And we worked together. We laughed. We had a good time. Next morning we went to Brother Mick's house and we worked together over there. Some of the brothers from the church, I called them up. I said, my brother's in need. My sister's in need. Let's go. They come by and Brother Joy got me. Amen. And, and we went over there and Brother Jody and different ones. Amen. And, and we worked and, and, and we just had a good time together. And then we had a good prayer together and cried together. Amen. God's still good. Huh? So sometimes when things happen like this, it's not always for the worse. Sometimes it's to pull us together. Because I'm going to tell you something as I close. Sometimes we get so busy. As long as everything's good, we just get so busy. We don't even have time for one another no more. Amen. Even husbands and wives don't have time for each other no more. With the power out for a few days over at the parsonage was a good thing to me. I hated running that generator, but hey, it's okay. Huh? Couldn't take hot baths, but it was okay. It gave my wife and I time to just spend alone with Jesus. And to spend time with each other. See, it ain't always, always bad, folks. Huh? And I tell you what, you'll eat a lot of things you thought you wouldn't. I think it might have been the first night we got back power, or first day, I don't know. I could be wrong, Lord forgive me, but it was one of those nights after we got back our power. I got been working in the yard till 8 o'clock that night, I still remember it, and I, I got in and got me a shower, and I, the wife said, what would you like to eat? <laughs> Sister, pray for him. <laughs> and I said, honey... I think some grits and spaghetti would be delicious about right now. I know some of you turn your nose up at that. Like I do deer meat. Huh? Boy, when I went in that living room, preacher, boy, good hot steaming grits covered in canned spaghetti. 
Creek, God Almighty. Hey! I was hungry, sister. I had a Jeffro platter too. Amen. I tried to get it to the table and it was running over the edges. I said, honey, why in the world you give me so much? But when it was all said and done, there wasn't nothing left. Huh? What are you saying, preacher? I'm saying, boy, when you've been a few days and you can't get that kind of stuff, when you can't get deer meat, you know, whatever. It's good to you once you get it, ain't it? Ain't it, Mr. Kenneth? Talk to me, son. There you go. Huh? God is good, ain't he, this morning? Would you stand all over this building with me? Would you stand, children of God? Man, I just want to encourage you this morning. I, I want to strengthen my brothers and my sisters in this place. I want us to leave here today with a good spirit, right attitude. Amen. Let's go out and help one another, love one another. Because again,